Hello, this is Minho Cho and welcome to this presentation on pair programming. This material is based on agile principle patterns by Robert Martin and other sources that are listed on the references and resources page at the end of the presentation. By the end of the presentation, you have full knowledge of what pair programming is and its importance in agile software development. Before we dig deep into the material, I want to give an overview of the presentation order. First, we're going to go over the definition of pair programming and then follow up with its history, the different pairing types, the different styles, the pros and cons, and finally, the conclusion. So starting off with the big question, what exactly is pair programming? Martin defines pair programming as the following. All production software is built by two programmers sitting side by side at the same machine. Persman also defines it in a similar manner saying, two people work together at one computer workstation to create code for a story. So we can see that pair programming has to do with two people working at the same computer workstation together. Well then, how and where did this practice originate from? According to Making Software by Andy Orham and Greg Wilson, pair programming was long practiced before the term was coined. The term itself was first used by Fred Brooks when he announced, fellow graduate student Bill Wright and I first tried pair programming when I was a graduate student, 1953-1956. We produced 1,500 lines of defect-free code. It ran correctly first try. Then in the early 80s, Larry Constantine reported observing dynamic duos, which produced codes faster and more bug-free than ever before. Fast forward to 1998, Professor John Nosek at Temple University conducted the first empirical study on the efficacy of pair programmers. Lastly, in the 1990s, early 2000s, pair programming practice was the big thing as extreme software development mythology emerged. When it comes to pairing types and pair programming, there are two participants. A participant can either be an expert or a novice. An expert is regarded as someone who has proficient knowledge about the project's tech stack, code base, and domain knowledge. On the other hand, a novice is a newcomer who usually has little to no programming experience and is not familiar with the project's technology and domain. With these roles, there are three different types of pairing types that we will cover in the next slide. First off, we have the expert-expert pair. This type of pairing is best for solving difficult problems, fixing bugs, and exchanging knowledge. It often leads to the highest productivity. Second, we have the expert-novice pair. This type of pairing is usually used for onboarding members as the expert can explain to the novice about the project, domain, technology stack, standards, etc. Doing this process, the expert can get a fresh look at their project through the novice. Lastly, we have the novice-novice pair. This type of pairing is the riskiest out of the three in terms of producing high quality code as both participators do not possess sufficient knowledge. This pairing goes best with a supervisor who can intervene when the pair gets stuck. Along with the three different pairing combinations in pair programming, there are different styles when it comes to pair programming. Some styles are pretty straightforward and can be implied from their names, but some of them are not as clear. There are six main ones, unstructured pairing, driver navigator pairing, also known as strong style pairing, backseat navigator, tour guide style, ping pong pairing, and finally distributed pairing. In the next few slides, we will go through each style and see the differences between them. This is probably what most people would think of when they hear pair programming. The unstructured style, as its name implies, is basically two people sitting down and writing code. This has many upsides. You can try out new languages or techniques to see how they work, and there are no set rules for collaboration, which means you can work at a pace that suits you best. Unstructured pair programming sessions are great for getting a lot done in a short period of time as you have two heads working on the same code slash project, but this might not be as great if you want someone else looking over your shoulder and guiding you on what to do each step. This type of pairing usually consists in one developer who is designated as a driver or navigator for a given period of time. The designated person will drive most of the interaction with writing code, while their pair will provide feedback about design decisions, ask questions about problem solving, and check whether the requirements are met. This approach tends to be more efficient when you're handling very specific tasks and require deep knowledge about a given domain or technology. It's also beneficial for beginners who may need guidance in some areas before being able to work on their own. The backseat navigator is for situations when someone knows what they want to do but doesn't exactly know how to accomplish what they want. In practice, they might be dealing with the backseat navigator in two ways. Either both participants can write code or they might be pairing with a developer who's looking over their shoulder and telling them what to type. If it's a one-on-one -on -one pairing and they happen to be a veteran programmer, 
they become the backseat navigator and they can help solve problems. The tour guide style of pairing is used for two developers with different skill sets, such as a junior and senior developer. The lead is responsible for doing most of the coding and is usually paired with someone who needs guidance, has specific knowledge that can be used, or just wants to see more. The junior developer focuses on improving their skills by asking questions and learning from what's happening around them. This pairing is ideal when one person knows more than the other about something like a new library or framework. Because both programmers are focused on writing code, there isn't much time for talking. However, if either developer has questions about how something works, they can ask before committing code. Ping pong pairing means you and your partner trade off roles. One person writes code while their partner reviews it. The driving and navigator rules will switch back and forth as well. However, because one programmer will know more about what to do than their partner, there is usually a bit of lead time to get things set up for that person to drive before they can begin typing again. The end result is that both partners benefit from working on one task together without switching back and forth between tasks. It also creates a dynamic where neither partner can dominate or take control over another's work. Although there are many different types of pairing arrangements, ping pong pairing is a great way to share responsibilities evenly. With distributed pairing, pairs are in different locations. For example, there may be two people in South Korea and two in the United States, or one person in Seattle and another in Washington, D.C. Pairing is carried out over computer networks rather than face-to-face. -face. Distributed pairing can be used when individuals are located far apart physically, so no one is forced to travel long distances to meet via V with their partner for pair programming sessions. One major benefit of distributed pairing is that it's convenient for all parties involved. It gives you access to better developers by providing an opportunity to work with specialists who live far away but have specific skill sets that complement your own skill set. So we went over the definition the various ways to conduct pair programming. With all this, I want you to think about what pair programming brings to the table. Why would any programmer want to decide who will be the driver or take the backseat? Why would any programmer want to pair up with another programmer to get their job done? Ultimately, what are the advantages of pair programming? If I give you 10 seconds from now, can you come up with the pros of pair programming? All right, 10 seconds starting from now. Were you able to come up with some advantages of pair programming? Let's go over them one by one in the next slide. See if any of the ones you listed are similar to the ones here. First, the most obvious and least controversial benefit of pair programming is knowledge sharing. Two people working on the same code help not only the two, but also the entire team to have a better understanding of the project they are doing. Second, pairing up with someone forces us to talk about different approaches and solutions for the task we are given. Doing so makes us reflect on what we actually know about the project. Third, maintaining focus is a lot easier when someone is there working with you. When you work solo and fall into a rabbit hole, you might be stuck there for hours. However, when you have a partner, they can get you out of it a lot faster. Fourth, if you think about it, pair programming is actually a process of continuous code review. There are four eyes looking at the same code while two mouths are discussing what's being typed in real time. Fifth, as two programmers are working together, the moment the code base gets typed, it makes it code that's already been checked by two people. This also makes the code base more consistent compared to when a single coder works on it. The remaining three go hand in hand with the advantages I mentioned earlier. Now we understand that pair programming comes with a lot of different advantages. We also know why a programmer would choose to do pair programming. However, this doesn't mean that pair programming comes without any flaws. Before I give you a list of disadvantages of pair programming, I want you to think about what kind of problems could arise when pair programming is conducted. Think about why a programmer wouldn't want to do pair programming. These reasons don't necessarily have to be associated with coding, but rather individual work habits, ethics, etc. If I give you 10 seconds, can you come up with reasons why programmers would be unwilling to do pair programming? 10 seconds starting from now. Were you able to come up with some disadvantages of pair programming? Let's go over them one by one in the next slide. See and if any of the ones you listed are similar to the ones here. First off, pairing is tiring. You can't take breaks when you want to, and that could make you drift off or become unfocused as you have to be in sync with your partner. Second, collaborating with someone else for long periods of time isn't the easiest thing. 
you will need to communicate constantly and have empathy and interpersonal skills. Third, as a software developer, meetings are inevitable and when working in pairs, meetings will break the flow. It only becomes worse when pairs have different meeting hours. Fourth, individuals have different skill levels. This can often lead to frustration towards the other programmer as they don't or can't meet your expectations. Fifth, not all pairs are made with programmers of the same background. There could be differences in gender, race, CS degree holders, etc., which could lead to power dynamics. So as you can tell, pair programming comes with its pros and cons. It's not ideal in every situation, but when it is, it definitely does its job. With the right amount of pair programming, productivity and efficiency can increase while the number of bugs and the overall project cost can decrease. Like everything else in this world, practicing pair programming can lead to greater things when used just right. And that's it for pair programming.